The Power and Light District is marking its fifth anniversary, but it's still losing money. Opened in 2008, the Downtown Entertainment District next to Sprint Center is still being subsidized by city taxpayers to the tune of $14.3 million. But if you head down there, it looks to be filled with bars, shops, and restaurants. So how can that be, Kevin? <laughs> well, let's just say the numbers did not work out the way they originally <laughs> promised, obviously. And to be honest with you, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Uh, a couple of years ago, we sat down and, at the Star, and Troy Schulte acknowledged this thing's going to probably need subsidies through its entire life. Uh, and the problem is that it was sold as being self-sustaining by the taxes it would be generating. They spent tremendous amounts of money, Cordish will argue, on streets and garages and sewers that needed to be upgraded, and really we shouldn't be held to account. But the point was the whole project was sold on that. They have not, A, you, you know, it's got a lot of bars and restaurants, but there's still a significant amount of vacant space. There's not a heck of a lot of retail there. There are several major buildings uh, or parts of buildings that have never had tenants. They've already had turnover in several spaces. So it's still very much a work in process and even just getting fully occupied. Uh, so it, um, most people will agree at City Hall it was money well spent, that it gives people a reason to come downtown. Uh, downtown was on the ropes. It wouldn't have really had much of a chance moving into the future. And it's made it a better place for people to live. There have been a couple lot of people living downtown. That Cosentino's Market has become the de facto town square of downtown Kansas City. It's, it's a marvelous place. But the numbers were overpromised, and the revenues have not met it. And they still got some real real estate to fill at that place. So there are other intangible benefits, Mary, beyond just these financial numbers that we're talking about here? Well, it does. It was a boost to the city in many ways. For our, for our downtown to be revitalized, that was a huge portion of it. And I applaud it for that. But it is at the very beginning of when these agreements were made, they should have held Cordish to a lot more than they did. There's also been problems for numerous restaurants there in handling their leases. Um, and that has undercut some of these restaurants' abilities to really set ground in and build their clientele. I personally think that there are way too many of these little bitty boutique shops that you walk in and wonder how in the heck could they be possibly turning a profit. I mean, that's management of who right. is going in there and how those leases are managed. And that all does play out in the money of where it comes down the line. And, and the thing is, as Mary points out, Cordish negotiated a deal yeah. in which any of their losses are going to be subsidized by the city of Kansas City. Yep. So, you know, yeah, do they have a, 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 a rational, uh, do they have a motivation to fill the space? Yes, but are they subject to the same kinds of difficulties if they don't fill that space? No, because they got a backdrop called the city yes. hall Phil. and the city taxpayer. And the, and the spin on it, the city seems to be taking is but when, and it's but when the streetcar is built, but when mm -hmm. we get the two new apartment buildings downtown, but when we get a convention center hotel, this will all go away. But doesn't this feel a skeptical? Criticism, though, about all city projects, well, Dave, this when, is the when people see this. Right. It's the classic example of what I just talked about, which is the theory here was let's give a tax break to Cordish yeah. or broadly give benefits to Cordish. They will build it and everyone will be happy. No one stopped to say, wait a minute, what if we gave that $15 million a year back to the people and let them spend it? Maybe that's the way to grow the economy. But, but in this area, uh, in Kansas, Missouri and Kansas City, we have incented businesses for decades without anyone sort of standing up for the other side of the equation. And in some ways, we see the results of that with the Power and Light project. After almost a half a century on the Country Club Plaza, the Halls Department Store is closing its doors. While we were hosting our two-week membership drive, Halls announced it's consolidating its operations at its Crown Center location, leaving the plaza for the first time without a department store. Why? It's the what they own. I mean, even the thing that's interesting is when you talk to some of the workers there at the Plaza store, when they were called in for their meeting to announce this to the workers, the workers even thought that it was going to be the Crown Center location that was closing. But really, when you look at it, they own Crown Center. They don't own the spot down on the Plaza. So it just it wasn't making money in this economy, which I've always been told, and who knows what the real truth is, that that store never really did, that Halls is like a gift to Kansas City, you know, a lovely package somewhat to have that. But when you're not making money in that large of a space and Highwoods controls that property, you're going to go to where, you know, you don't have that issue with the lease. Yeah, from what I understand, I, I think if they looked purely at 
if, if Halls was just a franchise department store and deciding which store they were going to close, they probably would have kept the one in the plaza open and closed Crown yeah. Center. But it is owned by Hallmark, which owns Crown Center. It's a way to reinforce their investment in Crown Center uh, and uh, base, and then avoid they don't have to pay the rent. But I think if you looked at the pure market, if, if what the, the people who shop there, yeah. it would probably be more appealing to stay in the plaza. But again, they don't own that real estate, and they want to reinforce the huge investment they've got in Crown Center. Because it is interesting, because you, you think about Crown Center, just even like five years ago, Crown Center w had a lot of vacancies. Yeah. And you think, wow, um, the, the plaza that, yeah, was hopping. The third floor area, their shopping centers always struggle too. And that's where, you know, I think that's where a lot of this is going to go. The thing to keep in mind, go. Nick, is that the way we buy goods in this country is changing dramatically. The internet is blowing up that whole model. I think you will see across the country the idea of standalone stores like Halls or any big yeah. department store uh, is really going to be under pressure. People can buy clothes and do buy clothing uh, and other, other goods online. Um, I, I think maybe this was a forward look looking step as much as it was a reaction to the specifics. Bill, of this do you have a scoop on what's going to actually take the place of holes on the Country Club Plaza? I don't. That would oh. be a Kevin Collison okay, right, question. Right, right. <laughs> That's a, it's an attractive property. I mean, you know, look what uh, Highwoods did with the old Saks department store. They basically converted the upper floors into office space and they located several uh, boutique type stores on the ground level. They could easily do the same thing with the uh, with the hall stores. And one thing that I was my colleague Joy Smith pointed out, the second level of that hall store originally was a garage area and they only put the retail in in recent years so there's some flexibility there and and actually when you go to the plaza these days I you know Highwood's got beat up and rightfully so for some of their office building ideas but I think overall they've done a pretty good job of bringing in retail and restaurants down there. Yeah, you were now saying that Bloomingdale's is coming into that that <laughs> area. <laughs> I would <laughs> seriously doubt that we I, couldn't I, even I, keep Mark Shale here so okay. no. <laughs> Sorry Bill you were gonna say something. It, it will attract a different clientele yeah at Crown Center because there's more of a tourist element in there now, especially with Legoland and yes. the aquarium. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and younger children demographic. And the plaza is yeah. kind of skewing more towards a younger demographic with Forever 21 and H&M and some of those places that are not your real halls 